I can remember vividly picking up uh, and getting my parents to purchase a comic book at a, I believe, a gas station on a road trip and selecting a Jack Kirby Fantastic Four reprint, insisting on that over a Mickey Mouse comic, and then having instant buyer's remorse when I couldn't understand anything in the comic and neither could my parents uh, help me, and they were of no help explaining any of it to me. My comics reading then really began with uh, collections of Peanuts and then Mad Magazines. I consider myself lucky that I didn't get the superhero bug until uh, my teens when uh, I wasn't around long enough to get the hooks in it's too deep before puberty hit and girls were more interested. <laughs> I've got a guy I work with in Brazil named um, guy Greg Tanishi. He works on a book called Low, yeah. and he draws it all digitally. Okay. And then I take yeah. it and I color it all digitally. Um, and the first time I'd ever I mean, see I mean, even if it's going to see print at all, it's going to be the first time when it hits the, you know, it stands at the comic store no, or whatever. No. But if you're buying it digitally, it's a book that it will never so see. That page, you can do it's that me. page for I, I don't think everybody should work uh, that way. And that's uh, in, like, but if you buy the issue, that's a new, in, you'll see it. Uh, it's a tool that, that is really a cool. legitimate tool, buy an, an art tool. Page from an issue it's and then, like, taken a long time for digital technology to catch up with physical media to look convincingly quality at a quality level that's that's good enough. The presentation of any comics I consider to be truly good or really interesting uh, to be have been affected by digital. Of course the uh, the monthly superhero comics produced by Marvel and DC clearly there is some consideration to digital formatting being taken in but none of that is comics or content that people are going to be talking about as this is the best our medium has to offer today. It's in fact usually the worst. Uh, and so the, the stuff that is truly good, the stuff that gets talked about, reviewed, that critics uh, think about seriously in terms of contemporary comics, we're not yet seeing that uh, influence of the tablet on how those comics are made, other than in maybe one or two cases a year. Uh, when I got started working in uh, coloring comic books, 20 years ago uh, I worked in a company called yeah, Digital Chameleon in around. Winnipeg. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the first three the the day, companies in the world to be coloring comics electronically. Yeah. They had to buy $70,000 computers. The uh, RAM alone was, I don't know, $3,000 for 80 megabytes of RAM. It was like this ridiculously expensive system. And they had a 24-hour sweatshop running in eight-hour shifts in order to justify the cost of these computers. And it took forever to color a page because uh, the technology was so slow and Photoshop was so rudimentary at the time, you would like run a grad of one color to another color and while it was processing that, you'd go get a cup of coffee and come back. And it would take sometimes two shifts to color one page, so like 16 hours to color one page. And now here we are 20 years later where I've got uh, a Mac Mini at home, a $500 computer, and it's all the computer I need. I can have an entire comic book page or an entire comic book all up on my screen all at once. Um, I work on a digitizing tablet that's locked into a monitor called a Cintiq and you can draw right on the screen. So And it's pressure sensitive and it's like working with natural media. And everything I do now basically looks like it's hand painted except it's not. And everything that the artists yeah, I work yeah. with look like they're all hand drawn and they're not. So it's great. It's, it's convincing and that's all that matters. So it's it's great as a as a as a tool now to work digitally because it's fast and you can correct it easily and you can transmit it to your client. Generally, I think we're living in one of the greatest eras for comics because there are so many fantastic things being produced and being read. Uh, far more variety and selection of material, which historically has always been the problem with comics in North America, is that you've had a very small collector-driven audience to gradually having a mass, uh, once again having a mass audience for comics, which comics can't really claim to have had since the Second World War. Yeah, I move frequently 
things like, I, you know, I moved in L.A. and Vancouver, and I'm in New York right now. But I have to move all my fucking comics every time I move. And it's, it's like most of the cost of my move, moving these comics. And I've got to store them somewhere when I get where I'm going. I've got, like, tens of thousands of comic books wedged underneath my stairway in my new apartment. And now, finally, DC Comics is switching over to a strictly digital comp system. Except for like stuff that you specifically worked on, but it's great because now I can just I can catch up on everything, and if I want to reference it, it's right there. It's so convenient. If you've got a good like high resolution iPad, I I prefer it to having paper. So, yeah. But that's me. I, mean, I know a lot of people like to have that tactile, being able to flip through it and get that experience, but that's going to go away because I mean that's what guys my age want. It's not what a 15 year old kid's going to want. Like I've got a three year old at home who uh, wants to watch everything on YouTube on an iPad. And we're like, you can, we can throw that up on the TV if you want. No, I just want it here on my lap, it's easier. You know, I can carry it with me. And that's what he's gonna think of with comic books. That's what the next generation's gonna think. Kids will probably, when they are my age, feel a romance for a type of tablet on which they first discovered reading that it now no longer exists for them. Uh, just as we will, you know, have uh, all sorts of Proustian sense memory associated with uh, newsprint that is decaying as we read it. Uh, and that, that these, uh, it is very natural to, to inform very, very strong attachments to those things that first gave you the stories that you love or, or the uh, type of reading experience or medium that you love. And I, you know, I am much more uh, a person who is attached to the medium, but it's very easy to see as someone who is attached to the story. Uh, again, you have a very uh, strong attachment, not just to the physical form in which that came, but also the manner in which you found out it existed, the manner in which you purchased it, all of these things, you know, uh, become a, an integral part of that experience. But there's no reason to assume that the new generation uh, won't find their experience just as special as we found ours. I think now we're going to start to see perhaps that there is more money in comics if uh, we can truly like grow this market, you know, before piracy collapses it. If we can grow this market to a big enough, uh, uh, a big enough size that it's worth people's uh, careers to spend it in. Many of the people who do spend their careers in comics do so, not so because it's truly worth their time relative to how their time and skills could be used in other media, but it's because they love it so much they will make choices that aren't perhaps financially the most sound, just mm -hmm. as I did running a comic book store. Mm -hmm.